Aloha, and welcome back to Physical Therapy for a Better Life. I'm your host, Christine Linders, physical therapist and board-certified orthopedic clinical specialist. Today, we're talking about the hips. We are going to give you, I am going to give you, all the best moves and the simplest strategies to achieve pain-free and better functioning hips. So anyone that's ever had a problem with their hips, we know, or you're about to know, the, the hips are so important for so many reasons to the health and well-being of our functioning physical body. They provide a great deal of stability and they need a great deal of mobility. So let's go to video number one to learn a little bit more. The hip is very important for mobility as well as stability in our body. And I'll explain how. So when you are an athlete, it's often a force generator. So if you're doing your golf swing and you're a right-handed golfer, you will wind up all the hip muscles to swing and then they will be on a stretch and then that stretch sets off a reflex and those muscles unload and you swing your golf club. I know it looks like I swung a baseball bat, but you can also baseball swing. You're loading the hip. The hips are generating the force. The force is coming through the pelvis and you swing a baseball bat. There's so much force. A pitcher who winds up on that back leg and takes their tiny little hip rotators, I'll explain them in a minute, and put them on a stretch so that they can go and unload the hip and deliver the force in a pitch. And so inside the hip muscle, this is your hip joint here on Little Richie, you've got this socket right here and this is your hip socket. A lot of people think their hip is right here on your pelvis, that's like right up here. But your hip is actually right here in your groin, that's where the hip socket is. And you have these six little muscles that run from the pelvis here out to the hip and they control their little rotators like your rotator cuff in your shoulder. They run out this way, this way, this way, this way, and there's one that attaches from the front of your sacrum out to your hip and that's the piriformis muscle. A lot of people have heard about that, but the other two are the superior and inferior gemellus and the internal and external obturator and the quadratus femoris, which all help to rotate and stabilize the hip, but when you rotate that leg in, they go on a stretch so that they can unload and explode into the body. But a lot of times the hip doesn't have adequate range of motion in order to accomplish that. Or the bigger glute muscles, the gluteus medius in particular, that runs from here to the hip, doesn't have enough functional strength when you're walking. And that's where a lot of people will get hip arthritis, knee pain, knee arthritis, foot problems or even back pain because the gluteus medius needs to stabilize your pelvis on this one leg like that. And so if the gluteus medius isn't strong, this will happen. You'll get a hip drop and it either tweaks your back and causes disc herniation or pain or radiculopathy or piriformis syndrome, or people will walk and they'll lean over that side. And that also causes instability in your back. So from behind, if I had a weak gluteus medius on the right, instead of being like this when I went to take a step, you would see this and you can see my back bend or you would see people who walk like this. And you can see how that creates excess motion at the back, but also at the knee, if this is happening, this bone is rotating in and that's where you will get a twist at your knee that will wear away the cartilage in your knee and lead you to having osteoarthritis of your knee. So that's a little bit about the hip and how we need to have stability, I'll show you in a minute. Now, I have done several shows on hip stability in my previous show, Movement Matters, as well as in this current show, Physical Therapy for a Better Life, where I show how to do many band exercises, sidestepping, and I just did some two weeks ago on Four Steps to Pain Free. So there's a lot of different shows that show the same exercises for hip stability, and I wanted to call that out today as well, because right now I'm going to show you the mobility that's gonna get you to pain free if you have stiff hips, if you have arthritis, if you have a poorly functioning lower body. And so I wanna explain a little bit more about those little muscles that I called out. Let's go to the second uh, image and you'll see these muscles. So you see here on the left screen, that big red, that's a powerful gluteus maximus muscle. That's what you feel when you, when you touch your backside, that's your gluteus maximus and if you look over to the right side the sacrum's in the middle that's that little center piece the gluteus medius is the one i was just talking about at the end of the video and you need to have a well functioning gluteus medius because that is what's going to keep your pelvis level 
on your femur, on your thigh bone, bone when you're standing. And if you don't, you'll get that hip drop or that lean over that I was talking about. Now, if we go back to the image, then you're gonna see those six little muscles, the piriformis, the superior gemellus, the obturator internus, the inferior gemellus, the quadratus femoris. And so you get these tiny little muscles in there that run out from your pelvic ring over to your femur, your thigh bone. And those are all those little guys when they get short and tight because we've had erroneous mobility or we haven't moved enough, that's when you can get a very poor functioning socket sitting in a ball sitting in your socket. And I could show you a little closer, I'm a little Richie here. So what I was showing you before. So here is the hip socket right here. And that's the ball that rotates in the socket, your thigh bone right here. And so a lot of people think their hips are on their, on their pelvis right here, but the hip is actually right in here, straight through your, your groin muscle. And so you've got your powerful hip flexor muscle that runs from your spine down to the hip bone. And you've got your gluteus maximus, the big muscle that comes now from the back here. I'll show you on the pelvis, the gluteus maximus runs from here back. That's your C gluteus medius comes that thinner one right to here. It will move your leg to the side. This one doesn't move so well, but also that's what stabilizes your pelvis on that is the gluteus medius. And then all the obturator and the gemelli brothers that run from your sacrum or from the pelvis ring down here on this little loop, your sit bone here over here. And that's like the hip rotator cuff. I like to call it. Those are the things that we need to make sure have adequate length in them and they're not too tight so that your ball can move freely in the socket and not lead you to hip arthritis or any other bursitis or uh, hip dysfunction that can give you pain. So when you stretch out your hips, you can quickly achieve pain-free. So let's go to the next video and I'll show you a little bit of my favorite and my patient's favorite stretches to gain mobility fast in your hips. If you have a stiff hip or a hip that doesn't have enough range of motion or you feel like you can't you know, cross your legs to put your shoe on or bend to get something, you first want to gain some mobility in your hips so you have more, more normal range of motion in order to make the joints in your body move more effectively. So one thing I like to do, it helps the, the hip socket to get back into the pelvis where it needs to be, especially if you've been guilty of like slouching or kind of sitting this way, it tends to push the the ball forward in the socket and can give you all kinds of problems in the front and pinching on the front of the joint. Because you want to get on your hands and knees like this and kind of sway your back a little bit like you've been a horse that's ridden too much and suck your stomach in just to stabilize your spine. That's a little bit more of a vulnerable position for your back. And you want to aim your tailbone to the sky and scoop back. Now, if you have a stiff hip, you might get to here and your back starts to round like that. You want to keep your back swayed and aim your tailbone to the sky and only go as far back as you can while keeping your back from moving. You don't want your spine to give up range of motion because your hip doesn't have any. And you also might feel a pinch up in here with your hip. If you do, just stop right there and go back. Stop and return. I like to do 20 times. It seems like it's 10 repetitions too many, but the body likes to go easily into things. It doesn't like to be forced. So if you do 20 times, you'll be giving just a little bit of mobility. And that will help anyone who has hip impingement or hip arthritis or anyone that has hip pinching pain, especially like in the front. So also, if you don't have enough mobility in your hip, you want to stretch out the glutes. So oftentimes the glutes can get tight if you're here or just different activities that you do and your ball won't go back into the socket where it needs to be because now yours, all those little rotators get tight and they hold it forward like that. So you're going to have to stretch it out. So my favorite stretch is what I call the knee to opposite shoulder stretch. So you basically take your knee, line it up with your opposite shoulder, your left knee with your right shoulder. Your foot's gonna fall a little bit to the side. You don't wanna feel any pinching in your hip. You're gonna put your left hand at the knee and your right hand somewhere mid shin and just pull it gently towards your chest. So you don't wanna crank it like this. You just wanna pull it gently towards your chest. You're gonna get a very deep rotator stretch. A lot of people will do this. You get more of the superficial muscles of your hip. You want to get the deep rotator. So you can do the knee up to opposite chest stretch or the very typical and famous figure four stretch where you cross your ankle over your knee and then you, I don't know if I can say it from the side, 
press your ankle over your knee and then you can just reach through and grab your leg. If you can't reach there, you can go under your thigh. And I also, I don't know if you can see it, you can also use your elbow to cantilever it here. You can push that down, but don't go push it hard. You don't want to damage the hip joint. You just want to gently stretch it. And I like dynamic stretching, so I tend to rock. Ooh, that's a stretch. Oh, that's not. Ooh, that's a stretch. Oh, that's not. So you can do that with both your hips. You also, very important muscle involving in low back pain is the hamstring muscle. It crosses the hip and the D joint. You want to put one leg straight, and that is to make sure that your spine stays in the neutral position. A lot of people stretch their hamstrings this way. I don't know if you can see my back bending here. So my, my low back is giving up some motion because my hamstring doesn't have it. But as soon as I straighten my leg, that's all I can get. Because you want to make sure this doesn't round to give you all this false hamstring range of motion. So if you can't get much, then you can cross your leg, your fingers behind your thigh and just gently kick and release. Kick and release to open up the hamstring to help your hip to be a little bit more free. Another one I like, uh, especially if you golf or you have hip arthritis, is to get some kind of range of motion in your hip, not your back again. So you're going to put your feet as wide as they can and as close to as your buttocks as they can, and then you'll just let both fall to the side. You may be surprised if you're having some difficulty that one way goes very nicely and the other way doesn't. And you may feel a stretch here, you shouldn't feel any pain or pinching, and then flip the other way and let it stretch. I clearly don't go as far this way, so I need to stretch that a little bit more. But that is another stretch that helps disassociate your low back from your hip. So it basically gets your hip moving with your back stable. A lot of people will do the knees together, feet together, and drop their knees side to side. That is to get your back moving. That's not a hip stretch. So I hope those help you get some mobility in your hips. Those videos are great. And I know I showed a lot of different mobility exercises or stretches as I like to call them in there. And I don't expect everybody to do them all. Some people need to do them all. Other people may only need one or two of those moves to achieve a pain-free hip. But the reason why I give them to you is because our bodies need to move. One of the things I think many people don't realize is that when you move a joint, like if he moves his shoulder joint, there's fluid in that joint that swishes around and lubricates the surfaces and gives nutrition to all those structures that are in and around the joint. And that's what makes us feel free for anybody that wakes up in the morning and says, oh, I just feel so stiff, like stiff or it's achy or it's painful. And then as soon as I start moving down the hall, all that stiffness and achiness goes away. And that's because you just lubricated the joint surfaces. You just got nutrition in the form of blood flow and fluid to those tissues and now they feel good and they feel more mobile. So movement is medicine. I've heard that term for years now. I haven't heard it too much lately, but I think one of the things that I want to inspire everyone to do is just to move a little bit more. I don't expect you to run a marathon or start walking five miles a day, but if you just move your body that's a prescription that you're prescribing for yourself. Like a drug, like a doctor would prescribe a drug or a vitamin, you're prescribing movement for yourself that's gonna help you achieve pain-free. So I've had five shoulder surgeries in the morning. I move my shoulders. I, I gently, sorry, little Richie, stretch them up over the head. Sometimes I do this and I gently go, I gently go and then I am ready to go and help people at work to become pain free. Sometimes I march in place to lubricate the joints in my hips and my knees. Oftentimes I go to the beach and I take a walk. And so there's all different kinds of moves you can do. You can wake up in the morning and move your feet up and down, slide your leg up and down the bed sheets just to get some movement. I, I want to call that out to you. So please try some of those stretches, try them all, watch the video again and do the knee to opposite chest to stretch the obturators and the Gemelli brothers and all those deep hip rotators. Do the stretch where your feet are wide and let your knees fall in and out to gain more range of motion to make your arthritis pain go away or improve your back pain because now your hips are moving better or stop your knee from hurting because if your hip doesn't move, your knee then has to. 
all these things will be those steps that get your body to achieve pain-free. So just go for it and enjoy. But that's not it. So let's go to the next video where I show you a little bit more about how to stretch the bigger muscles in a three-dimensional manner. A great way to get mobility in your hip, all the big muscles, is to do dynamic stretching. And I like to do it in three dimensions because we don't just move in one dimension. Our muscles function in three dimensions. So we're gonna do a little hip flexor stretch first. So you're gonna put one hip on an object that doesn't slide. So on the edge of your bed or on a chair against a wall. If you can raise your arms, up over your head, you're gonna suck your stomach in, push your hips forward a little bit. It will stretch your hip flexor, your iliopsoas muscle, your psoas muscle. And you're gonna push your pelvis forward, lift your chest. Pelvis forward, lift your chest. I like to do maybe about five times each. And after that, you're gonna go in the second plane. You're gonna hold your pelvis forward. You're gonna move it left to right. And you're gonna feel a lot of stretching and different angles in here. Five times, make sure your tummy's in. Then you can do the third dimension. You're gonna put your pelvis forward, turn your chest up and to the left, come back. Pelvis forward, up and to the right. Pelvis forward, up and to the left. Pelvis forward, up and to the right. So that's gonna get your hip flexor. Now we're gonna do your hamstring. So you're gonna put your leg on whatever surface you can get on your hamstring and, and not have your back rounded like this. You wanna have your spine in neutral and stretch your hamstring, not your back. And you're just gonna bend your left knee and bow your chest forward. Again, you don't want to round your back like that. You don't want to give your, your low back to give up motion where your hamstring doesn't have any. You want your hip to get the range of motion. So you're gonna bow forward again five times, forward backward, then you're gonna hold it and you're gonna move your hips left to right. That one's hard, left to right. Again, I do about five times. Then you're gonna bow forward, turn a little bit to the right, woo, a little bit to the left. Now I'm gonna get my glutes a little bit more in the game here. Just don't let your spine round. Keep your chest up, sternum to the sky, I like to say. And now you can get those deep rotators that we were just stretching earlier. And you can put your leg in kind of a, a figure four. I, I used to use the kitchen table actually, because it was high enough for me so I don't strain. Keep your weight on your hands. You don't want to put all that pressure on your knee, especially if you have a sore knee. You want to make sure that your body is safe. So keep your pressure on your hands. Back leg straight, spine in neutral, and then just bend at your hip. So I'm doing like a little push-up, bend at your hip. That's the first dimension. Now you're gonna hold it, and you're gonna move your hips a little bit to the right. That brings in the side hip, a little bit of my back here. Side hip, side to side, and then you're gonna bend and turn one way, up, bend and turn the other way. Keep your tummy pulled in just to stabilize your spine. And there's one I forgot to show you earlier which is a great thing to stretch all these tight muscles, your glutes in the outside of your pelvic ring here. And what you're gonna do is you're gonna get on your hands and knees, walk your hands forward again, keep your belly button in just so that you can keep your spine stable. And then you're gonna walk your hands over to the left and then lean your hips over to the left. A lot of people say, they've been telling me lately they have tight hips. And they're not really talking about the deep inside the joint, they're talking about all these powerful glute muscles, they're playing sports and they're getting tight and you lean and you breathe. It's very important to breathe because it's another muscle that attaches from your rib cage to your pelvis and you want to stretch that. Deep breath. And then you come up, walk your hands over to the other side, let your hips and your buttocks fall to the left and then breathe. So enjoy free hips. Every single stretch I showed you today, every single move I showed you today is going to help you to achieve pain-free hips. And the one point I would like to hammer home as we wrap up is that it doesn't have to be a huge step of movement that you do every day, but one comfortable step that you start doing like any new habit you want to develop, you start stretching your hips on a regular basis. The key is consistency. So if you pick one stretch that you're going to do, that makes me happy. That means you are one step closer to pain-free hips one step closer to being free in your physical body to do all that you want to do. So pick one stretch, pick two stretch, pick three stretches, whatever it is that you want, but do with something that fits into your schedule, something comfortable for you that you can achieve and feel good about. And that will start your process of movement, of getting your body back to where you want to be, of achieving pain-free, which is something that myself, my patients, and everyone that experiences pain all strives for. Movement is medicine. Prescribe yourself something 
today and enjoy pain-free hips. Thank you so much, everyone, for joining us today to learn about how you can achieve pain-free hips with a couple simple moves. And thank you to Think Tech Hawaii and all our sponsors and donors for allowing us to be here with you. Life is better when you listen to your physical therapist. Aloha, everyone. Thank you so much for watching Think Tech Hawaii. If you like what we do, please like us and click the subscribe button on YouTube and the follow button on Vimeo. You can also follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and LinkedIn, and donate to us at thinktechhawaii.com. Mahalo.